love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient etherized upon a table. Let us go through certain half-deserted streets, the muttering retreats of restless nights in one-night cheap hotels, and sawdust restaurants with oyster shells, streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious intent to lead you to an overwhelming question. Oh, do not ask, what is it? Let us go and make our visit. In the room, the women come and go, talking of Michelangelo. The yellow fog that rubs its back upon the window panes, the yellow smoke that rubs its muzzle on the window panes, licked its tongue into the corners of the evening, lingered upon the that stand in drains, let fall upon its back the soot that falls from chimneys, slipped by the terrace, made a sudden leap, and seeing that it was a soft October night, curled once about the house and fell asleep. And indeed there will be time for the yellow smoke that slides along the street rubbing its back upon the window panes. There will be time, there will be time to prepare a face to meet the faces that you meet. There will be time to murder and create and time for all the works and days of hands that lift and drop a question on your plate. Time for you and time for me and time yet for a hundred indecisions and for a hundred visions and revisions before the taking of a toast and tea. In the room, the women come and go, talking of Michelangelo. And indeed, there will be time to wonder, do I dare? Do I dare? Time to turn back and descend the stair with a bald spot in the middle of my hair. They will say how his hair is growing thin. My morning coat, my collar mounting firmly to the chin. My necktie, rich and modest, but asserted by a simple pin. They will say, but how his arms and legs are thin. Do I dare disturb the universe? In a minute there is time for decisions and revisions which a minute will reverse. For I have known them all already, known them all, have known the evenings, mornings, afternoons, I have measured out my life with coffee spoons. I know the voice is dying with a dying fall beneath the music from a farther room. So how should I presume? And I have known the eyes already, known them all. The eyes that fix you in a formulated phrase. And when I am formulated sprawling on a pin wriggling on the wall, then how should I begin to spit out all the butt ends of my days and ways? And how should I presume? And I have known the arms already, known them all, arms that are braceleted and white and bare, but in the lamplight downed with light brown hair. Is it perfume from a dress that makes me so digress? Arms that lie along a table or wrap about a shawl. And should I then presume? And how should I begin? 
Shall I say I have gone at dusk through narrow streets and watched the smoke that rises from the pipes of lonely men in shirt sleeves leaning out of windows? I should have been a pair of ragged claws scuttling across the floors of silent seas. And the afternoon, the evening sleeps so peacefully, smoothed by long fingers, asleep, tired, or it malingers stretched on the floor, here beside you and me. Should I, after tea and cakes and ices, have the strength to force the moment to its crisis? But though I have wept and fasted, wept and prayed, though I have seen my head, grown slightly bald, brought in upon a platter, I am no prophet, and here's no great matter. I have seen the moment of my greatness flicker, and I have seen the eternal footman hold my coat and snicker, and in short, I was afraid. And would it have been worth it after all? After the cups, the marmalade, the tea, among the porcelain, among some talk of you and me, would it have been worthwhile to have bitten off the matter with a smile, to have squeezed the universe into a ball to roll it towards some overwhelming question, to say, I am Lazarus, come from the dead. Come back to tell you all. I shall tell you all. If one, settling a pillow by her head, should say, That is not what I meant at all. That is not it at all. And would it have been worth it, after all? Would it have been worthwhile? after the sunsets and the dooryards and the sprinkled streets, after the novels, after the teacups, after the skirts that trail along the floor, and this, and so much more. It is impossible to say just what I mean, but as if a magic lantern threw the nerves in patterns on a screen, would it have been worthwhile if one, settling a pillow or throwing off a shawl and turning toward the window, should say, that is not it at all. That is not what I meant at all. No, I am not Prince Hamlet, nor was meant to be. Am an attendant lord, one that will do to swell a progress, start a scene, or two, advise the prince, no doubt an easy tool, deferential, glad to be of use, politic, cautious, and meticulous, full of high sentence, but a bit obtuse, at times indeed almost ridiculous, almost at times the fool. I grow old, I grow old, I shall wear the bottoms of my trousers rolled, shall I part my hair behind, do I dare to eat a peach, I shall wear white flannel trousers and walk upon the beach, I have heard the mermaids singing each to each, I do not think that they will sing to me. I have seen them riding seaward on the waves, combing the white hair of the waves blown back when the wind blows the water white and black. We have lingered in the chambers of the sea by sea girls wreathed with seaweed red and brown 
until human voices wake us and we drown. Wednesday. Because I do not hope to turn again, because I do not hope, because I do not hope to turn, desiring this man's gift and that man's scope, I no longer strive to strive towards such things. Why should the aged eagle stretch its wings? Why should I mourn the vanished power of the usual rain? Because I do not hope to know again the infirm glory of the positive hour. Because I do not think, because I know I shall not know the one veritable transitory power because I cannot drink there where trees flower and springs flow, for there is nothing again. Because I know that time is always time, and place is always and only place, and what is actual is actual only for one time, and only for one place. I rejoice that things are as they are, and I renounce the blessed face and renounce the voice because I cannot hope to turn again. Consequently, I rejoice having to construct something upon which to rejoice. And pray to God to have mercy upon us and pray that I may forget these matters that with myself I too much discuss, too much explain. Because I do not hope to turn again, let these words answer for what is done, not to be done again. May the judgment not be too heavy upon us. Because these wings are no longer wings to fly, but merely vans to beat the air, the air which is now thoroughly small and dry, smaller and drier than the will, teach us to care and not to care. Teach us to sit still. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Lady, three white leopards sat under a juniper tree in the cool of the day, having fed to satiety on my legs, my heart, my liver, and that which had been contained in the hollow round of my skull. And God said, Shall these bones live? Shall these bones live? And that which had been contained in the bones, which were already dry, said chirping, Because of the goodness of this lady, and because of her loveliness, and because she honors the Virgin in meditation, we shine with brightness. And I who am here dissembled proffer my deeds to oblivion and my love to the posterity of the desert and the fruit of the gourd. 
it is this which recovers my guts, the strings of my eyes, and the indigestible portions which the leopards reject. The lady is withdrawn in a white gown to contemplation in a white gown. Let the whiteness of bones atone to forgetfulness. There is no life in them. As I am forgotten and would be forgotten, so I would forget, thus devoted, concentrated in purpose. And God said, prophesy to the wind, to the wind only, for only the wind will listen. And the bones sang chirping with the burden of the grasshopper, saying, Lady of silences, calm and distressed, torn and most whole, rose of memory, rose of forgetfulness, exhausted and life-giving, worried, reposeful, the single rose is now the garden where all loves end terminate torment of love unsatisfied, the greater torment of love satisfied, end of the endless journey to no end, conclusion of all that is inconclusible, speech without word and word of no speech, grace to the mother for the garden where all love ends. Under a juniper tree the bones sang, scattered and shining. We are glad to be scattered. We did little good to each other. Under a tree in the cool of the day with the blessing of sand forgetting themselves and each other, united in the quiet of the desert. This is the land which ye shall divide by lot, and neither division nor unity matters. This is the land. We have our inheritance. At the first turning of the second stair, I turned and saw below the same shape twisted on the banister, under the vapor in the fetid air, struggling with the devil of the stairs, who wears the deceitful face of hope and of despair. At the second turning of the second stair, I left them twisting, turning below. There were no more faces, and the stair was dark, damp, jagged, like an old man's mouth driveling beyond repair, or the toothed gullet of an aged shark. At the first turning of the third stair was a slotted window, bellied like the fig's fruit, and beyond the hawthorn blossom and a pasture scene the broad-backed figure dressed in blue and green enchanted the Maytime with an antique flute. Blown hair is sweet, brown hair over the mouth blown, lilac and brown hair. Distraction, music of the flute stops and steps of the mind over the third stair fading, fading, strength beyond hope and despair, climbing the third stair. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. But speak the word only. Who walked between the violet and the violet? 
who walked between the various ranks of varied green, going in white and blue, in Mary's color, talking of trivial things, in ignorance and knowledge of eternal dolor. When moved among the others as they walked, who then made strong the fountains and made fresh the springs, made cool the dry rock and made firm the sand, in blue of larkspur, blue of Mary's color, Sylvania Bos. Here are the years that walk between, bearing away the fiddles and the flutes, restoring one who moves in the time between sleep and waking, wearing white light folded, sheathing about her folded. The new year's walk, restoring through a bright cloud of tears, the years restoring with a new verse the ancient rhyme. Redeem the time, redeem the unread vision in the higher dream, while jeweled unicorns draw by the gilded hearse. The silent sister veiled in white and blue, between the yews, behind the garden god whose flute is breathless, bent her head and signed, but spoke no word. But the fountain sprang up, and the bird sang down, redeem the time, redeem the dream, the token of the word unheard, unspoken, till the wind shake a thousand whispers from the you, and after this our exile. If the lost word is lost, if the spent word is spent, if the unheard, unspoken word is unspoken, unheard, still is the spoken word, the word unheard, the word without a word, the word within, the world and for the world, and the light shone in darkness, and against the word the unstilled world still whirled about the center of the silent word. O my people, what have I done unto thee? Where shall the word be found? Where will the word resound? Not here, there is not enough silence not on the sea or on the islands, not on the mainland, in the desert or the rain land. For those who walk in darkness, both in the daytime and in the nighttime, the right time and the right place are not here. No place of grace for those who avoid the face. No time to rejoice for those who walk among noise and deny the voice. Will the veiled sister pray for those who walk in darkness, who choose thee and oppose thee, those who are torn on the horn between season and season, time and time, between hour and hour, word and word, power and power, those who wait in darkness? Will the veiled sister pray for children at the gate who will not go away and cannot pray? Pray for those who choose and oppose. O my people, what have I done unto thee? Will the veiled sister between the slender yew trees pray for those who offend her, who are terrified and can 
not surrender and affirm before the world and deny between the rocks in the last desert before the last blue rocks the desert in the garden the garden in the desert of drought spitting from the mouth the withered apple seed oh my people although I do not hope to turn again although I do not hope although I do not hope to turn wavering between the profit and the loss in this brief transit where the dreams cross the dream cross twilight between birth and dying bless me father though I do not wish to wish these things from the wide window towards the granite shore the white sails still fly seaward seaward flying unbroken wings and the lost heart stiffens and rejoices in the lost lilac and the lost sea voices and the spirit quickens to rebel for the bent goldenrod and the lost sea smell quickens to recover the cry of quail and the whirling plover and the blind eye creates the empty forms between the ivory gates and smell renews the salt savor of the sandy earth this is the time of tension between dying and birth the place of solitude where three dreams cross between blue rocks but when the voices shaken from the yew tree drift away let the other you be shaken and reply blessed sister holy mother spirit of the fountain spirit of the garden suffer us not to mark ourselves with falsehood teach us to care and not to care teach us to sit still even among these rocks our peace in his will and even among these rocks sister mother and spirit of the river spirit of the sea suffer me not to be separated and let my cry come unto thee